morning. I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Well, we haven't gotten a phone call from the shearer or a text, so I assume today we're shearing sheep. So um, we're going to run and do chores and hopefully he'll be here very shortly. And I get, looks like the peanut gallery is waiting for me. Well? Well, what? What are you saying? I want to get shearing. That's right. Now, did you feed the uh, little guy? Yeah, he actually uh, figured out this morning how to jump in the manger and got out on me. Ooh, sneaky little guy. So yeah. the old mom's feeling yeah. really privileged because she's in with yeah. all these yeah. ewe lambs and yeah. she's at the creep feeder getting special ration. So, yeah, some of them end up having a happy life to the right to the bitter end. Hey, sweetheart. Good girl. Here they go. Our investment. Don't rush, guys. You can tell that it's going to be a much warmer day. The sheep move a little slower on days like this. Oh, did you miss the door? Did you miss the door? Oh. oh here comes another one. <laughs> This is our investment. Oh, where, what's where's the girl? Don't tell me the pink eye's starting already. What? She doesn't have pink eye. Oh, well, I don't see too many flies yet, so. <laughs> yeah, they went that way. I think she's the one that was last out yesterday, too. Run! Okay. Here's the rest of the investment. These are the rams. Their numbers are getting smaller. And probably there's another 20 or so to go to market. And then that'll be it for the rams. And all these Suffolk ewes we've held back for ourselves. And all the white ones we're trying to sell. Well, we would like to keep 10 of them back. Okay, here's the big rush. Max, stay here. See, even they're moving at a much slower place. Oh, maybe I'll go out. How hot is it? I know the feeling. Okay, so the shearer hasn't arrived yet. He hasn't sent me a message, so I assume he is still calling, but it's 10 in the morning, and we really can't wait. We, we can't stop. It's such a busy time of year. So right now, Arnie's there. We're going to put the sheep that are out at pasture grazing the mature ewes into a new pasture. Like I mentioned the other day, the pasture where these adult ewes are grazing right now, they're right at the very, very back. I'll show you the job that they've done on that field. It's totally mowed down. And it's time for them to come into this new pasture. And we were hoping that the sheep get sheared today and they'll join them in this pasture. But this pasture has already started going into head so it's a bit too long and the sheep like we've told you before don't like it when it starts getting long so what we do we take the mower in and we go around the perimeter of the field which encourages them to walk around and then he's going to do a few up and down pathways too and a diagonal kind of make a little maze in here and in a couple of days he's gonna bale up all the hay that he's cut down 
and then the sheep will come in here. We already, if you can see in the netting there, have a whole bunch of sheep that have already come back. They don't like the heat today. This is where they are right now, the majority of the flock. They've gone right to the back. But if you look at this field, except for the odd things that they don't like to eat, it's pretty chopped off. I'm not sure if you can tell that. Um, you'll see a few stalks sticking up, but all the leaves are gone. They are very fussy. They're not like goats. They'll leave everything that they don't like, and they'll chew down to nothing the stuff that they do like. But this field is done, so we have to get this one ready. And you see, in just that this short time, it's grown up to be a hay field. But we're guessing that we've got plenty of hay again this year because we have leftover from last year. Um, so even if there's a drought, we should have enough hay. Otherwise, we would have just bailed up this whole field. But that would mean the sheep would have to come in and be eating hay off the feeders. We really do like them to go out. I mean, it is nicer. We like it. Um, we Right now, we're at the stage where we really do have to start watching them for parasites. But so far, so good. And uh, they're, they've been in a big field. It's not overpopulated. So they're going to come in here. And you see Arnie's going right around the field. And they actually like to follow these paths. And it encourages them to eat into the middles. And so they'll start eating from the sides where the path is. And then they'll, as they graze off the leaves, they'll start moving in and in. So we're hoping that this pasture, when we add, hopefully, the other 60 ewes today, um, that this pasture will do them at least another month. And then, if we don't get rain, they will be indoors, because that will be it for the pastures. But if we get rain, then in a month's time, this field here would be growing up and safe to go back on because the cycle of worms is 20 some days. We like to wait a month before we reuse the same pasture just to be safe. But in good weather, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna ideally rotate them so that they are off the initial field for at least a month. But in drought conditions, it doesn't work that way. You have to, uh, take them off the field at that point and start feeding them hay until you start getting regrowth again. And sometimes that can be in the fall if it's a drought. But um, if you get rain, it should only be a, sh a short period and after a month, the pasture should be more than ready enough for the sheep to go back on. But it's always weather related with farming. Okay, these guys that we let out are heading back towards the gate and I have all these gates open because Arnie's out in the field so I might just run back and try chase them back into the field so they don't escape on me. Never mind, I might just lock them up for a second because they're all running in anyway. You guys, what is this? Might be safer to just lock them up until Arnie's finished mowing that down. Because I got a lot of gates to watch here. So he's gone and done the perimeter now. maneuver that I wasn't expecting. I guess he's just turning around. Okay, I guess he's going to do a pretty wide perimeter. I thought he was only going to go one time around, but maybe he's going to go two times around. And the goal today is to get all our rams sheared and to shear the 
rest of those ewes that were waiting in the barn. They're the February lammers. They need their wool off right away. So I still haven't had any feedback from Jacob, which usually means they're coming, but sometimes they don't call at all. two perimeters and now he's going to make a big X in the field and do a diagonal so we'll have basically four little paddocks in here that they can munch off of plus we'll get some hay off here and by the look of it it looks like the interior of the pasture is a little lower in height than the edges were so they might like it quite a bit I don't think we're going to let them in here until Arnie t picks up the bales though. So it won't be today, it might be the day after, um, just because he doesn't want the sheep pooping and peeing in that freshly cut hay. That kind of defeats the purpose of making your hay. Same with spreading um, manure on your hay fields. Not such a good idea if you're taking manure from your manure pile and putting it on the hay fields because um, any parasites that were in the manure and stuff are going to be put back in the fields. And I know there's parasites in the fields anyway, but why add to the problem? We only put our manure on the crop fields. I guess I should have realized he would do double passes for each one because when he rakes the hay, his rake, um, it flips the two rows into one, and then he bales the one row. So he needs to do two passes in order to bale it correctly. And it looks like he's only going to do one diagonal, too. There's always surprises. They tell you one thing and then you see another. But maybe he's thinking it's not uh, thick enough that they're not going to have a major problem. I'll ask him. But there's a bit of maneuvering here as he has to get this big machine through the gates without hitting anything. The nice thing about this mower is it does have that big long arm on it. So it makes turning and maneuvering uh, much easier. And he's going to come out here now. So what's the story? It's fertilizer. Yeah, I thought I thought you you're, so you're only doing one diagonal because it's thin in the middle. They'll yeah, eat that true. anyway. Yeah, because I mean I mean I got lots of hay, so why not just look for grease? Well, I thought you might have done another diagonal, then they'd have four paddocks. But if you think it's thin enough, you know what I mean? If you did another diagonal, then... go back in? I was just worried about taking hay away from them. Okay. No. Um, this is actually pretty thick. It actually is worse back in there. Thinner. thinner. Yeah. So well, I, I can... I, it looked really thick on the edges and thinner in the middle. So we can try it that way. And I just wanted to let them graze the rest, eh? And now you're doing this... this I might go right, right around the fence lines and different and lure those lambs around the edges. Okay. So we're going to just do this and then hopefully we'll be shearing but I have a really sneaking suspicion he's not going to show. Okay, he's going to do his passes around this field. This is to encourage little white girls to go farther in the pasture because uh, the adults seem to have gone right to the back and done a good job grazing off their pasture. But uh, the little white ones only want to go so far and that's it. So this does lure them out. Okay, he's coming back for the final diagonal in the front pasture. It's 10.30, still no shearer. 
I think you might be just letting the use out on this paddock because they partially grazed it anyway. I don't think he's going to bail it up, but we'll see. Well, I'm out in the field that we cut down yesterday and it's turned into a really hot day today with full sunshine so Arnie came down here to rake it up since we're not shearing and it's almost a hundred percent dry but not quite so I'm guessing Arnie's gonna rake this all up see how he had it all laid flat in fairly close rows and then he folds them over with his rake to create one big row like this. There's quite a volume of hay here. Now it's rare that you can make dry hay at this time of year, but if he had the space to store dry hay, I'm guessing he could wait another day and dry bale it, but I'm thinking he wants to wet bale it because we're a little short on space, storage space, because we have a lot of old hay left from last year and it's taking up space. Always with farming, it's about weather and space. Space for the sheep, space for the equipment, space for the hay. Um, always that's an issue. See that rake, it grabs both rows and it pulls them together to form one big row and that's where the tractor will drive down with the baler. Now we just stopped right now because some of the hay is really heavy and the rake wasn't picking it all up if you can see way up there on the hill. There's some hay that kind of is coming out of the row. So he had to make some adjustments on the rake to see if he could make it um, have more pressure on the ground so that it would pull it up more. So he tried to make an adjustment and now he's testing it out to see if it'll work. Because apparently up on that hill there, that's where the alfalfa is and where it's thicker um, that's where it's not gathering it all up. So he's just come back to this row again to try re-pick it up. We'll see if it works. But he, uh, the alfalfa portion of the hay is still quite damp. You couldn't dry bale it. The grass section seems to be quite dry. Okay, so we went over that. And it looks like it did pick it all up. So that's good. It must be working correctly now. So he's going to get um, this part all raked up. And then you can kind of see where the grass is kind of greener. He cut that down this afternoon, so he'll just cut, um, rake the grass that he cut yesterday. And after dinner tonight, he's gonna come and bale this. And tomorrow, he'll wrap it. So the hay itself is looking really nice. And for those of you who say you like the smell of hay, you'd probably be quite happy out here right now. I, on the other hand, am allergic to hay, so I t try not to breathe too heavily when I'm around it. <laughs> While Arnie was doing this today, I decided to register those six sheep that um, Grace bought the other day when she came over and 
picked out six registered ewe lambs. Um, I got a notice from the Canadian Livestock Record Corporation telling of the price increases to register sheep and membership fees and stuff like that. And also they put on there that if you register online, it's a little cheaper than if you do it by paper. Of course, me being n not computer friendly, I've always done the paper method in the past. But today I decided to register the six online. That took me about an hour and a half to register six sheep. So obviously I don't charge enough for registering sheep <laughs> because, oh my God, I had to call the, the company twice to get help because it kept uh, hanging up and, and not working correctly. Finally, I got it all done though, but shortly I'll be registering all our keepers and stuff. So there's way more than six sheep to register. Um, nothing's easy these days, it seems. I, I don't know. But uh, for me, paper method is always, well, it was, it always was extremely time consuming too. That is why I do charge more for registering sheep than if people buy them unregistered. It takes me a long time. As you can see, we're at 30 degrees out there. And of course, the air conditioning on my car is broken. So we're doing it the old fashioned way. Windows open. Car has to go in on Tuesday. I think it's next Tuesday. So while I'm driving home here, I thought I was driving by our field with the holes in, where I said it would make a nice lot. As you can see, the holes are now water free. I'm sure if you walked in there, you'd sink in it. But if you look really closely, this is our fall barley field. And this is where fall crops have the edge because you know that in the winter they've got snow and we had rain too. And in the early spring, that's when you're getting most of your moisture. So it's actually looking quite well, considering we've had no rain recently. You can see that the heads are on it already. And yeah, it looks like a beautiful crop. You can start to see it swaying in the breeze. But right now, because it's in head like that, the heads are where the seeds are. And in order to get those big heavy seeds full of food and uh, bulk, right now they need rain. So it's growing well now and the seeds are forming, but if there's no rain, what will happen is you'll get little tiny seeds so when you go to combine it, there won't be much volume and we get paid by the volume. So you'll not get as much money for your grain. And also if you're feeding it to animals and we will be feeding it to the sheep, um, you know, you would rather eat a plump raisin than one that had shriveled to nothing. So it's the same idea with the barley there's more food value in the big crunchy seeds. So we're still hoping for rain, but there is none in the forecast. I think um, a lot of people are having the same problem, but at least we have a little visual here to give us some hope with this field because we can actually see it growing. As long as we don't see it dying, 
it'll be okay probably. It will start turning color, it'll start turning that golden color when it's getting close to harvest time. So welcome to Utopia Farms. Hi you guys. So to get to our other crop fields I do have to drive there. Some are at the back of the home farm but the others we have to drive to. Just fed Tommy his dinner and I'm heading back to see Linus right Hi you guys. Did I catch you all in the creep area? You too Linus? Are you hungry? Are you a little hungry? Were you with your buddies picking out? Okay we're gonna feed you now. Oh, he's having his bottle. He's got a little Dorset Ram friend here, seeing what that's all about. No, you're not having any. That's for Linus. It's not for you. It looks good, I know. Buddy, you know, it's his bottle. It, you don't need to be a bully about it. He wanted to eat in this spot. No, I don't think I don't think you're you're, you're really up for that. I don't think he likes the one-handed thing. He likes to be held and and have my arm around him like that. Yeah, you do. It it, it feels more intimate that way, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It makes it taste that much better. Yeah. Because you're doing really, really well. Most of the rams are just trying to relax. Except for you two. Who are you two? You guys wanted mm -hmm. to get sheared today. Sorry about that. There was nothing I could do about it. I tried my best. I did. And now we don't know when it's going to happen. Oh dear. This is what we didn't, we've been shearing really early. We started early because we wanted to avoid this problem of not having ever, anyone sheared. Luckily this group is done over here, but quite a few left to shear. I think we have about 140 sheep left to shear. And we were hoping that 100 of them would have been done today. Hi, Cracker. Hi, sweetheart. You coming to say hello? You didn't get sheared either. It's, it's on the cards, okay? You are in the next group. Sorry about that, buddy. The good thing about the old barn here is that these thick stone walls make it quite cool in here, so... This barn in the heat of the summer is actually the coolest, but all the rams out here too, they, uh, they were supposed to have all been done today. And they're in, they're in corners and stuff. And they, they gather together because it's all a shady spot, but they sh would be better off spread out more but they don't understand that. But they're hot today. I saw Scotty in with the rams, so. Do you want your food? Come on, I got some in the milk house for you. Come on, come on. So, because Buddy's not here anymore, Tom has decided to be the boss of the barn. And he is trying to run Scotty off. So luckily, Scotty's buddies are the rams, and Tom seems to like the lambs and the ewes inside the barn here. But what I have to do now is when I'm feeding Scotty, I shut the door to the barn so that Scotty can eat here, because if Tom is over here eating at 
his food bowl and he sees Scotty come in here, he tries to put a run on him. <sighs> it's always trying to keep people happy. Poor Scotty. And Scotty's the original barn cat, too. And people are probably going to ask if um, Tom puts the run on Scotty, do I think he put the run on Buddy, too, and that's why Buddy's not here? And I would say no to that, because Tom and Buddy were friends, and they both tried to put the run on Scotty, who's the original old boy. As for Buddy, one of two things happened with him. The hopeful one is that there was a cat in heat somewhere at some other farm, and he wandered off and he's got a new home and a new girlfriend. That's the one we're going to stick with because the other alternative is that a coyote got him. And cats are like rabbits, and I think they're one of a coyote's favorite foods. So he went to a girlfriend's. We're going to stay with that one. So Arnie was bailing hay tonight, so... I had to do all the chores and I decided to put that on tomorrow's video so you can see that at the beginning. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm boiling hot and I'm going to call that a day. Hope you enjoyed your time here. Please don't forget to subscribe and send us a like and be sure to join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Good night.